All right. Um, thank you for having an opportunity uh, to present here. I, I'm really proud that uh, 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 Junkarpe actually made it through uh, this work. And uh, I'm a professor of mechanical engineering, uh, Kazu Saito. And uh, I usually do mechanical engineering, but uh, after a couple of years of doing the same thing, I thought uh, we would have fun, and uh, we uh, worked on this uh, problem of uh, uh, the cotton folding. And uh, Jim Kapp, uh, we carry on, and uh, I got the good work done, and now he's working at the Pacific Northwest lab in uh, Washington State. And uh, so this is really uh, the, the summary of his PhD thesis. He finished about uh, uh, one hour, uh, one year and a half ago, uh, and uh, that I hope uh, uh, you find it interesting. So with that, uh, Jukap, yeah. you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for a great introduction. Um, yeah, um, my name is Jungkook Park, and uh, I really thank you all of you for having me here. And uh, so uh, today I'm going to talk about my uh, my PhD research topic, uh, statistical potential for uh, protein structure prediction. So let me uh, start from very um, basic. So. So the function of a protein structure is, is usually uh, implied by their um, their structures. So so so, however, due to the time and cost of experimental methods such as X-ray calligraphy or animal structure, uh, animal uh, spectrometry, uh, a huge amount of protein structure has not been uh, solved yet. So as a complementary uh, computational method aiming to protein structure prediction uh, from sequence have been developed. So the folded protein structure correspond to the global minima on the energy surface. So in principle, the protein Structural prediction is a task for searching the global minima on the potential energy surface. So the energy function is used for the mapping between sequence space and the structure space. And so the quality of the prediction results critically depend on the, the energy function as well as the sampling uh, searching method. So in this research, I try to uh, improve the accuracy of energy function by exploiting the information in embedded protein structure, uh, embedded in known protein structures. So here is the outline of my presentation. Um, starting from the background, I will explain how I develop the uh, new energy function and how I validate it step by step. So first of all, um, let me brief about the potential energy function. So in principle, the potential energy function can be obtained from uh, quantum mechanics. However, um, uh, current computing power is not sufficient for simulating the macromolecules like proteins or uh, DNA molecules. So as an alternative approach, molecular mechanics has been developed. And in this approach, atoms and bonds are modeled by beads and springs, respectively. So it consists of several energy terms. Uh, and each term represents different uh, physical interaction. So statistical potentials are derived from uh, the database of protein structures. So they use various observed st structural features to approximate interaction between um, atoms or residues. And so due to the, their computational um, efficiency and accuracy, Statistical potentials are frequently used in many research areas, such as uh, structural prediction, protein design, and docking simulation. So let me uh, explain more uh, details about statistical potentials and their basic, basic principle. Uh, there are various factors contributing to protein, protein structure stability and folding. So understanding of protein energies allow us to approximate the interaction energy in terms of structural features. 
uh, structure of statistical potential employ Boltzmann law to convert the observed frequency of a certain structural features into the effective energy of corresponding features. So observed frequency is uh, counted from the PDB database and the expected frequency um, can be obtained from the, uh, can be obtained by defining a reference state where no interaction exists. And so by combining this observed frequency and uh, expected frequency, we can obtain um, an effective potential energy function. So far, various statistical potentials have been developed, and they can be categorized by um, uh, three, character three characteristics. First of all, um, depending on the level of details in the presentation, they, they can be cut they can be classified as graduate level or atomic level potentials. In general, atomic level potentials are more accurate than graduate level potentials. And secondly, um, any structural features can be used to derive statistical potentials. Historically, um, pair, co pair contact or pair wise distance potentials are frequently used because of their simplicity. <coughs> and these days, more complicated structural features are used to, to include to um, I used to, to <laughs> and also uh, various states have been developed. They are differ from they are differ from each other depending on how to address the inherent constraint in protein structures. So the inherent constraints may include the protein finite size or the amino acid composition or uh, chain connectivity. Um, so the key idea for developing statistical potential is how to decompose the three-dimensional network of interactions in protein structures. So in general, pairwise potentials are widely used because of their computational efficiency. However, um, a number of studies uh, report that the, these pairwise potentials are not sufficient for reliable protein structure prediction. So beyond these you know, pairwise potentials, um, higher order multibody potentials have been developed, and the multibody potentials basically aim to account for the environment dependence of interactions. They are more proper to represent three dimensional interactions, also, they can account for the cooperativity of interactions. So, the so multibody potentials have shown their uh, superior, superiority to typical pairwise potentials. So looking at the protein structures, we, will, uh, we, rather, we readily notice the multibody nature of interactions. The preferred protein structure is tightly packed and surrounded by water molecules. Also, the environment of interacting entities is anisotropic and inhomogeneous. And also, the, the bond connectivity uh, results in correlated interaction from nearby residue or atoms. So Interactions in protein structures are highly uh, dependent on the environment. So in order to um, incorporate the environment dependence of interactions into statistical potentials, uh, various structural descriptors have been developed. So, this, uh, so the environment descriptors should be able to uh, categorize various structural features into a few discrete states. And the, in this, this research, um, in this research, the rotamic state of residues have been introduced to develop a new environment dependent, dependent on the statistical potentials. So next slide, I will explain how the rotamic states and how, uh, how the rotamic states can affect on the specificity of interactions. So the basic building blocks, as you know, the, of protein structures are amino acid residues. In fact, they are very flexible. Most single covalent bonds in residues are rotatable, and except alanine and glycine, amino acids have at least one rotatable bond. So, for example, in case of lysine or arginine, uh, there are four rotatable bonds, which results in many different conformation depending on the uh, environment. So because of local static interactions, 
within the amino acid residue, residues prefer to only uh, a few staggered conformations known as rotamers. So in, the, in general, the rotating bond favors three orientation, Gauch minus, uh, trans Gauch plus. So depending on the combination of such favored orientation, uh, residue conformation, and their intra energy uh, significantly vary. So, in the perspective of quantum mechanics, um, the electron density distribution if around each nucleus can depend uh, can vary depending on the molecular conformation. So, the charge in electron density distribution may result in varied dipole moments and induce charge reorientation and where are reflected by uh, dispersion forces and electrostatic forces. So therefore, depending on the rotamer state, um, residue atoms may have different solvent accessibility, electron electric polarization effect, as well as different uh, steric effect. So in this research, uh, as I said, uh, I hypothesized that the rotamer state of residues Politically affect on the uh, specificity of interactions within protein structures. So, uh, so let me uh, talk about the rotamer specific environmental features that are extracted from non protein structures. So, uh, this is a, a, like a preliminary study for my PhD study, uh, research. I performed a, 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 a several statistical analysis to see how. Residues in PDB structures show different interaction patterns within surrounding residues depending on their rotamer state. Uh, first of all, we prepared a set of um, high resolution PDB structures, and uh, about 5,000 structures were used for this analysis. And so, in this analysis, I focus on the static interaction only. Uh, residue and its surrounding residues are placed in a reference grid box. And then uh, at each grid point, we computed the static, in, uh, static field potential origin, originated from the neighboring residues. So finally, um, I estimate the distribution of static field potentials for a given rotameric state. So from such a distribution, um, we expect to find the preferred strict interaction patterns for each rotameric state. So, rotamer specific environmental feature is defined by two types of grid grids clusters. High static potential grids are clusters of grids favoring high static potentials. Um, in contrast, uh, low static potentials grids uh, are clusters of grids that prefers low static potentials. So in other words, um, high static potential grid represent special uh, locations that um, are frequently um, occupied by neighboring atoms. And the low static potential grid represent uh, locations that are not, uh, that, that are frequently voided in protein structures or uh, exposed to, to the solvent molecules. So here are, um, some examples of rotamer specific environmental features for different amino acids. So as you can see, um, for example, hydrophobic residue, leucine, um, uh, have a large uh, steric, large steric, a large high, high steric potential grid, which means that it, uh, the residue favors to be buried within protein structures. In case of asparagine and glutamine, uh, because of their uh, terminal polar atoms, they prefer to be um, exposed to the solvent at a part particular location and orientation. So this plot shows uh, um, license rotamer specific environmental features, and we can see that um, the interaction patterns are quite different from each other, even though they are the same amino acid type. So all these results uh, support the hypothesis is that uh, the rotamer uh, state significantly affects on the specificity of interactions within protein structures. Um, so
so as an application of the rotema specific environment features uh, we divide a scoring function for, for protein design problem um, the goal of this the goal of a protein design system is to predict amino acids amino acid sequence and their low complex states for a given backbone structure so the deriving the derived scoring function includes um, terms taking into account to the rotema specific um, environment features as well as common um, energy terms like um, like a static or uh, potentials and uh, solvent energy terms. So these two actually these two terms uh, basically measure the energy uh, the degree of matching between the extractive rotema specific environmental features and the steric environment of considering residue. Um, in order to see the effectiveness of rotema specific environmental features, uh, we tested a different combination of energy terms and also we compared the prediction accuracy with that of um, Rosetta energy function, which is widely used for the protein design problem. So, in short, um, the better results are obtained when the rotema specific environmental features are incorporated. So, it, uh, in particular, compared to the Rosetta, uh, our energy function shows much improved accuracy for the especially for the surface residue and uh, in case of this uh, a particular combination and a combination of energy terms shows much um, uh, improved accuracy for uh, uh, that shows the best accuracy so this might indicate that the rotema specific environmental features uh, model the hydrophobic effect more effectively than the uh, typical uh, conventional um, uh, solvation model or um, solvation model. And uh, when we compare the accuracy of, for each different amino acid type, we can see significant improvement for polar residues such as cysteine or asparagine or glutamine. In fact, these polar residues uh, require accurate modeling of solvation effect so so we can also so the results also support that the rotema specific environmental features are uh, effective for the modeling of solvation effect so now uh, let me talk about the rotema uh, dependent atomic statistical potentials named LOTAS so so based on the, the previous uh, statistical analysis. We decide we de uh, we decide to develop a new atomic statistical potential, which takes into uh, account the rotema dependence of interactions. So here we, from now on, uh, I will refer the energy function by rotas. So in the rotas potential, the interaction between two atoms is described by the spatial distance and the uh, relative orientation and their rotamoric states. So actually there are total A parameters to specify interactions. So these R, J, R, I represent the rotamoric state of residues that the uh, atoms I and J are belongs to respectively. So in order to um, have sufficient statistics from a finite number of structures, um, conditional dependence of parameters are assumed. So, namely, the, so we so this Bayesian network uh, shows that con the conditional dependence that we we assumed. So, namely, the angular parameters are assumed as dependent and. And at the at the given distance and the rotamoric state. So the so this is this equation shows the final form of the rotas. So actually, long residues such as um, ricin or arginine have too many rotamoric states to obtain sufficient stati statistics <laughs> from a uh, uh, instance. So make sure, so we decide to. Uh, we decided that maximum two side chain dihedral angles are associated to each atom for defining the rotamoric state. So, for example, this CG <coughs> atom is, is, is associated with 
this uh, chi2, chi3 uh, dihedral angles to define their rotamer states. So this way, we can limit the maximum number of rotamer states uh, to the uh, 9. And uh, so the distance dependent pairwise potential uh, is constructed using the defier reference state. And the defier reference state is basically an ideal gas system in which the atoms are uniformly distributed. And also, the observed probability for orientation terms are estimated by um, corner density estimation method because a simple histogram based method it costs many zero beams. So when interacting residues are closing, uh, also when the residues are closing sequence, uh, since the their residue, their relative orientations is critically affected affected by the, their chain connectivity. So, so in this estimation, we only consider atom pairs that are separated by a certain uh, length, related length along the chain. And uh, the expected probability distribution for uh, re, uh, anger, uh, angles is calculated from a, a reference state where the relative orientation of atom pair is randomly distributed. Um, uh, still, we have uh, we had a, a, a problem in the obtaining the sufficient statistics. So, so we 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 employ some other red remedies. So some re because this is because some rotamer states are very very rarely observed in the database. In this case, uh, the probability density is, is corrected by um, combining the rotamer dependent probability and uh, so rotamer independent probability. So as you can see, uh, this poorly um, estimate red probability density is corrected by uh, combining this distribution. And, uh, and also, uh, in order to get a, a accurate uh, statistical potential, uh, we have, we need to uh, consider a proper interaction cutoff. And the proper, proper interaction cutoff is uh, um, so, and because of the statistical uncertainties, there are always, there are always a fluctuation in the long range, although there is no in electrostatic interactions. So in fact, most physical interaction terms um, convert to zero beyond the eight or an strong. However, um, the estimated Interaction energy do not converge even beyond the 10 Ohmstrom. So, and also in some cases, we observe that the, the deviation increase, <coughs> like here. So, the interaction cutoff for the rotate potential is set to uh, 10 Ohmstrom. And uh, here are a few energy curves in the rotate potential. So, for a comparison, um, we include the GOAP potential, which is uh, which corresponds to the orientation dependent statistical potential, which does not account for the rotamer dependence of interactions. So, so all examples, as you can see, all examples shows that the, the energy profiles uh, significantly vary depending on their rotamer state, and also the rotamer dependence. Um, can be found for the non non polar interactions as well as the uh, long distance polar interactions. So, as we, as we can see that the rotamer dependency are not limited to the particular type of interaction or a certain range of interactions. So, in uh, so the performance of ROTAS was evaluated using decoy sets. So. Each decoy set was developed by uh, different research groups uh, with different methods. And so we collected the total 469 targets. And uh, so first of all, we assessed the ability for recognizing the native structures from decoy models. Mm, two measures are computed for the assessment of the, um, for the assessment. 
number of recognized protein uh, native structures, and also we compa computed the um, average jet scores of native structures. So, so these jet scores represent the energy gap between the uh, energy of native structures and the uh, average energy of all decoy models. Uh, all decoy models. So Lotus could recognize um, 409 uh, native structures with the average data score uh, negative 3.8. So in comparison with existing other statistical potentials, uh, Lotus shows the best performance. And uh, especially the G, uh, GOAP potential uh, recognize the native structures uh, comparable to the Lotus. However, uh, we can uh, we can see that the Lotus shows consistent, consistently improve the jet scores of all decoy, mode, uh, decoy sets. And this plot shows the relationship between the energy scores of Lotus and GOAP for all native and decoy models. We can easily confirm that the Lotus score the native structures with lower energy and decoy models with higher energy compared to the uh, GOAP potential. So this indicates that the existing statistical potentials can be, um, can be fine-tuned in, by including the rotamer dependence of interactions. And uh, we also found that uh, the ability of native structural recognition is large, largely affected by experimental methods <laughs> used to define the native so, except the, um, the IW plus uh, statistical potential, all statistical potential show better, um, better uh, performance for native structure prediction uh, solved by X-ray method than the, those by NMR method. This is because um, most st most statistical potentials are uh, uh, derived from the structures uh, solved by X-ray. Uh, crystallography. And uh, furthermore, the, the recognition performance decreases as the resolution of native structure decreases. This is because the most statistical also uh, potentials are constructed based on the high resolution uh, uh, structures. Um, so the good energy Statistical potential should not only able to um, recognize native structures, but also it should make a, um, um, uh, energy pairs, uh, energy middle energy uh, middle range energy funnel uh, towards the native state. So we examine the correlation between the energy and model quality. So in here, the model quality. Uh, it represents the structural similarity between the models and the uh, final native structures. So here are some examples uh, of, of a relationship between Rotas energy and model quality. So we calculate the two correlation coefficients and, uh, and, and, and you can see depending on the decoy set, Different and this function shows the best correlation. Mm -hmm. uh, however, um, <coughs> overall the the Rotas potential shows the best performance in both measures. And also for more robust evaluation, uh, we use the the uh, receive operating characteristic ca techniques. So in this test, in this evaluation. Uh, given a, a certain score threshold, we see how how well the energy function rank near native models at the top uh, at the top among a set of uh, models. So, uh, so error covers are uh, uh, obtained for all threshold, and we compute the area under the error curve. And overall, we also found that the rota shows the best classification performance and especially when you calculate the p-values of by the t-test paired the t-test we can see that the rotas shows the the, the 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 difference between the rotas and other statistical potentials 
uh, uh, statistically significant. Um, as I mentioned, uh, actually the, the interaction cutoff in the statistical potential uh, critically affect on the performance. So this plot shows that how the interaction cutoff uh, affect <coughs> on the performance. So especially depending on the evaluation criteria, the optimal interaction cutoff uh, varies. Um, in particular, the correlation coefficient the correlation coefficients get better when including the long-range interactions, uh, and this might be because the including the long-range interaction smooths the energy surface. However, um, you should, should also notice that the the linear relationship the the linear relationship between the score and the model quality might not be proper. Uh, for near native confirmation. So, so, so another another critical factor affecting on the performance is the reference state. So here I uh, we applied five different uh, reference states which are widely used to, to develop the statistical potential. Uh, and we and we basically uh, develop uh, different reference states and then Incorporate them to the uh, rotax potential. So comparing the their performance, um, overall the this RW or reference state and the fire reference states show better performance than the others. And actually, this RW uh, states, uh, reference states uh, uh, include more uh, sophisticated sophisticated you know, um, modeling for the for modeling the inherent constraint in the protein structures. Um, so, so this result indicates that the more sophisticated reference state accounted for the inherent constraint in protein structures can improve the, the performance of statistical potentials. And uh, so, as well as the various structural features, uh, in fact, the evolutionary information also can be utilized in protein structure prediction. So, for example, um, EPAD um, is a statistical, another statistical potential utilizing the evolutionary information in a sequence database. So, basically, it has a different energy profiles depending on the, the sequence profile context of the, the interacting atom. So, simply in this uh, so here we attempt to combine this EPAD uh, statistical potential with our OTAX potential to see um, how to see the possible improvement. So uh, EPAD shows the best performance in the correlation co coefficient. However, the, um, when combining these two, two statistical potential, we can get the best performance at the native structure recognition. So this uh, this uh, result also indicates that uh, our uh, the statistical pot the str uh, our rotas potential can be improved by incorporating the inf evolutionary information in sequence database. So um, so let me uh, brief uh, summarize what I uh, present today. So. So the rotamus specific environment features um, capture distinguishing iteration patterns for each rotamer, and, uh, and uh, our new statistical potential rotates or task performs better than existing other atom atomic statistical potential, and uh, its performance is validated on various decoy set. And uh, and I didn't um. And mentioned about the side chain modeling, but we actually did some test uh, for the we used the rotas statistical potential for side chain modeling, but and also we could we found that the rotas showed some improvement for the the side chain modeling. So this we 
can say that the Rotas can be used for the you know, accurate modeling of side chains in protein uh, structural modeling. And uh, there can be a, a several extension to uh, uh, current research as follows. Uh, first of all, um, in addition to the rotamonic state, uh, it would be uh, uh, attractive to develop a comprehensive descriptor for the environment of the interacting atoms or residues. And also, um, in this research, we only focus on the non-bonded interactions, but uh, including the bonded uh, related energies such as um, um, the torsion energy between uh, connected atoms um, and the effects of observation effect and entropy contribution may improve the uh, performance of ROTAS. So this might be another, uh, this can be another extension to the ROTAS. And finally, uh, many applications such as protein design, mutation analysis, or docking simulation uh, usually require accurate modeling of site chain. So it might be very interesting to apply our rotas potential to this type of applications. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, end of presentation. So, so do you have any question about the uh, Presentation. Let's start. Harry? Sure. I need a should microphone. You should be able to hear. Speak up and you can hear. Okay. Yeah. Try. <laughs> so uh, in one of your in one of your slides you showed um, I apologize if I'm if I got this wrong. You're showing that the improvement mostly came for surface residues and that you looked at a number of different methods and you saw that the core looked equally high for, for for all these methods so your improvement mostly came for like here you're looking at at uh, particular classes of residues that would mostly be on the surface right these charged guys and polar and the like so does that mean that we're doing okay with any method for core residues on rotomer prediction um so basically this, I mean, we have two different studies. So in the first studies, I tried to see how um, how rotamer states can be, how each rotamer state, state have different interaction patterns with the surrounding residues. So, so, and and the second studies, uh, we develop a a general statistical potentials for protein structure prediction problem, and 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 this yeah so slide what you so slide 20. yeah this slide should about the first study, um so how how so this slide shows that the um so basically in this application we only consider the static interactions only so. And static interactions and which is um, uh, a static interactions between whatever uh, residue and its surrounding residue so so only incorporating the such static interactions into a um, the protein design problem uh, we just found that uh, we can improve the accuracy for the uh, especially for the particular uh, high improvement for the especially for the uh, surface residue so this is for the only for the protein design pro uh, design problem and uh, the second part of the, my presentation is about the general uh, protein protein structure prediction problem so it should be so it so the second part of the the, the rotas potential should not be uh, uh, Um, it also uh, improved the accuracy of modeling the core residue as well as the uh, surface residue. And as you can see, usually the surface residue 
it is very difficult to modeling the surface rigid because of their uh, high flexibility and mo and most of the method are very uh, shows very uh, good accuracy for the core rigid because because it's very easy to predict the rotamic side chain uh, conformation uh, for the core rigid so it is very difficult to improve for the it, it is almost i mean the accuracy for predicting the core rigid is uh, almost saturated so so the the main challenge is right now is to predict the the side chain conformations for the side uh, surface residues thanks thank you is anybody here from Nanjiang Town? They're on Spike today. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was on his committee, but he, uh, so, so Dr. Dan knows the work. Uh, so, do you have any comments about this? Um, he liked it. <laughs> no, do you? Uh, <laughs> what? Do you have any comments? Uh, I'm his advisor. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, you know, <laughs> so, we'd all like to learn from this. Okay. Um, uh, well, the, the, this you know. Uh, well, my comment is that uh, uh, this is one of the uh, uh, work we we look at the uh, existing work and uh, try to obtain an insight. Uh, 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 pretty much from uh, uh, what we know, is basically it's a more of a, a geometric viewpoint. And I'm I'm a mechanical engineer, so I, I work on a lot of geometry and assembly of the stuff. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, so when, when, we, when I learned that uh, all the energies are uh, uh, composed, the statistical computations are composed of a uh, fairly limited uh, illusion of uh, what the shape uh, uh, of the uh, uh, molecules are uh, configured in space. And uh, uh, I realized that uh, the rotomeric state is the, uh, the things uh, uh, which, uh, until we find it, it to us, it's, it's more of a um, uh, uh, we thought it's, it's you know a lot of smart people have worked on it, <laughs> so uh, and we couldn't first you know believe that, that there was a big gap there, uh, uh, and uh, because it's to us it's kind of obvious things it's, you know that things can only you know uh, take a certain uh, discrete angles and then depending on that you will interact differently from the outside, which is you know uh, to us is a kind of you know intuitive uh, concept. And uh, so we took a lot of uh, time to uh, uh, one this gap, <laughs> you know, here in this particular field. Two, to prove th that in a way, uh, I would say, people in this community can be convinced. So you know, the Junkov most of the work was trying to kind of you know uh, 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 prove his hypothesis in a manner we can communicate with these you know, people in this community. So. Uh, in that regard, you know, uh, he has done probably you know more things than necessary to make a point. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, I'm uh, uh, satisfied with the contribution in the sense that, uh, that not only the intuition came from uh, uh, what we know we are good at, uh, 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 also it was uh, uh, I would say uh, uh, um, communicating in a way. Uh, People outside of our engineering field could understand, and uh, so that's that's my you know, take of this work. Yeah. There you go. Well, there's this. There's a big lesson here of comparing methods. We've done this with uh, uh, concept gen from Maureen Sartor and from Juan's method, other methods. When we introduce a method or a, a new parameter in a set of methods, yeah, it's very important to do an objective and credible. Uh, comparison with the alternative, especially well-established methods. So that roster of alternative methods is extremely important. It's also equally important that the authors of those methods admit that your analysis was fair and quantitative and what the relative performances as displayed are justified in the results. So that's a very important feature and it means that you have to understand the other methods as well as the one you're working on. Because it's common for people to say, well, you included my method, but you didn't do it right. 
where you didn't account for all the features that we routinely do, something like that. I wanted to ask you, so this is a very nice piece of work, uh, Junker. I wanted to ask you a tiny detail. In the slide 21 here, and slide 17 I'll ask you in a second, where you say ASP and GLU, those stand for aspartic acid and glutamic acid. And the formula that you've shown here on 17 shows if you see the carbolic, carboxylic acid side chain. So these are surely aspartic acid and glutamic acid, which are different from asparagine and glutamine. Anybody else make that observation? I hope I'm right, because I'm... No, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I didn't notice that you're right. Yeah, you know, sort of jumps out at you. So you want to make sure you've, you've got that corrected. And um, it would be interesting in these cases, because it is an important mutation from glutamic acid to glutamine, given the changes, the charge and other features, uh, what its effect is in your model and in the protein, of course. OK? Um, uh, can, can you repeat the last, last question, I mean, last sentence? Oh, uh, if there is uncertainty whether you have actually analyzed for glutamic acid or for glutamine, mm. it could make a big difference because their structures and their charge state and their effect, therefore, on the protein in the local area, at least, and probably for interactions. There's a big difference between glutamine and glutamic acid. I see. Mm. Okay, so just, just check that. Okay, I see. Yeah, yeah that's good. So it's, it's good. One, oh, sorry. Uh, I just have one question. I, I noticed in general all these statistical potentials did pretty badly with uh, and comparisons to NMR structures. Is that because you think it's harder to make the comparison, or is it just that these are being overfit to uh, something that's in a state uh, such as crystal packing forces and things like that? Um. If you, if you look at the comparison of all of these different statistical potentials to crystal structures of different resolutions at the NMR structures. Did you hear the question, Luca? Yeah, this one. Yes. So, so yeah, everybody except for whatever that middle one is seemed to do worse, and especially your method seemed to do worse for NMR structures. Mm -hmm. um, that's because, I mean, yeah. Yeah, as you said, most statistical potentials are trained based on the x-ray structures except the nms structures so and also the as you know uh the resolution or the the um, um actually the nms structures the resolution of nms structures are uh, lower than the x-ray structure uh, x-ray crystallography of the structures so it might be so it is very, it might be uh, not proper to uh, use NMR structures to evaluate the uh, potential energy function for their accuracy. Well, so the, the reason I ask is, you know, NMR structures are probably more biologically relevant. So is that, are you like correct to within the resolution that's available from the NMR structure or is it, are things like and pick there are totally different uh, hold. Or have you not looked close enough to know? Tell us how to understand this slide. What? Explain how we should understand this slide. I I just took it as a comparison of different. Uh, no, I'm just trying to, because you have five methods showing the different colored bars, right? Yeah. And then it's showing the success rate for choosing the native structure over a bunch of decoys. Uh, split up by uh, different uh, structure determination methods for the reference, right? But is an average z-score better if it's more, more negative or better if it's... Negative, for, more negative is better. More negative, negative is better. Yeah. And then for the success rate, you obviously want it higher. But, you know, I'm looking, especially GOP and Rotus are, in general, the best performers, but they seem to have a particularly large gap between the high-resolution crystal structures and the NMR structures, which is always bothering me. Mm. 
Yeah, that's uh, actually that's a good point, but uh, uh, I haven't really uh, uh, looked at that problem uh, details. Um, so, uh, um, but what I know is that, uh, uh, the effect of resolution mostly. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah, right. I mean, we haven't really looked at why this is low in. in yeah, I mean, if you're missing, if, if, if it's because and uh, rotas are, are significantly low, right. and that we didn't really dig into that. I guess, I guess the the rest of the four bars are something we we thought we yeah. want to try. Yeah, because biology doesn't reason. happen in a crystal. That's why. I'm... Okay. Yeah, I'm just curious. A few more work after graduation. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them busy. All right. Thank you all. Right on time. Thanks. Very good. Thank you, Junko. I gotta go to work after this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bye.